we have to be a lot more productive. Workforce participation has to rise from its all-time modern lows. It means that um, people need to work longer hours and, and through their productivity gain more income for their families. Jeb Bush this week is saying we need more Americans participating in the job market and working longer hours. And Democrats started bashing him almost immediately. Hillary Clinton tweeting out, anyone who believes Americans aren't working hard enough hasn't met enough American workers. Well, here's what Bush said about that bashing. Take a look. You can take it out of context all you want, but high sustained growth means that people work 40 hours rather than 30 hours and that by our success, they have money, disposable income for their families. Kerry, is Jeb Bush right? If we had a strong economy, we'd have more full-time employees. He's absolutely right. And I find it so rich that Hillary, the woman who said businesses don't create jobs, is the one who's criticizing creating jobs. We need to roll back job-killing regulation that this administration has expanded that has killed people and moved them away from full-time to part-time employment. And Rich, isn't Hillary making a, a, a cheap shot suggesting that he thinks Americans are lazy? Well, look, uh, Jeb left himself vulnerable with the phrase need to work. If he would have emphasized want to work, it would have gone a whole lot better. And I think he needs to make the case a little more strongly than he has that it's productivity that drives that opportunity to work as much as you want. But uh, Obamacare, EMAC, has, has driven a lot of employers to cut back on full-time uh, uh, work in terms of uh, moving workers from full-time positions to part-time positions so they don't have to pay as much in insurance. Yeah, it's basically the employer mandate tax. Um, it, it really has helped wreck the 40-hour work week. Uh, it basically said to employers, you know, to pay the tax if your workers work less than 30 hours a week. And it, it was so upsetting that even, to the unions, David, that even the Teamsters and two of the unions wrote to Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi saying Obamacare is really hurting our job growth and, and the 40-hour work week is the linchpin of the middle class. Well, specifically, Bruce, I, a lot of people were kind of amused to hear Nancy Pelosi when, this, when the government admitted that Obamacare might cut down on some full-time employees. Uh, she suggested it was a good thing. Here's what she said. We see it as an entrepreneurial bill, a bill that says to someone, if you want to be creative and be a musician or whatever, you can leave your work, focus on your talent, your skill, your passion, your aspirations, because you will have health care. But you'll have a part-time job instead of a full-time job, Bruce. Well, I think uh, she's right in one respect because most people have multiple uh, part-time jobs. But I think uh, John Ellis Bush missed the point here and that he should have been directing these comments toward employers because the last labor statistics report said that there are about 7 million people who want to work full-time, uh, but they can't be made full-time. But there, Sabrina, there's no question that we've had an increase in part-time workers and labor force participation has gone way down. And one of the reasons for that, David, is because of the kind of burdensome regulations that Washington imposes on the private economy. One of the things that he should really come out and, and all of the, the presidential candidates should come out and, and talk about is how we want to get rid of and roll back some of those EPA regulations. We don't want lawmakers micromanaging wages. We don't want them mandating benefit packages. Those are all the things that make businesses no longer nimble. It make, means that, that they can't invest in their workforce and increase job hours or new jobs. That's what I think. I think um, Jeb Bush was getting at, but he, he sort of, you know, it, it was one of those awkward moments that didn't come out exactly as planned. John, bottom line is we, we should have an economy that's growing strong enough so that if people want to work full time, they can work full time. Absolutely. I just think he misspoke. Let's face it, in Bangladesh, everyone works full-time all the time just to survive. We don't have to do that in the United States, and that's a big positive. What he should have said is we should not be penalizing work so that if people want to be productive, they won't be penalized for it. That's yeah. taxation, regulation, all that. Yeah. He just misspoke. Well, and Kerry, we shouldn't pe penalize the employers who want to hire people full-time but can't because of some of the new rules and regulations like Obamacare. Right. No, yeah, it's, it's Obamacare. It's 
also Dodd-Frank, for example, which is killing investment. We need people to invest and take risk and create jobs. And everything yeah. that the left is doing is doing the opposite. Oh. Yeah, the proof is in the GDP. We, uh, you know, from 1950 to the year 2000, we had half the time 4% growth. We only had 4% GDP growth in 2003-2004. What happened then? Government exploded. Government got even bigger and more intrusive in, in, in our lives. Last word from EMAC. The cash and gang getting you ready to roll at the bottom of the hour. Eric, what do you got? Hey, David, a new push to cut federal funds to sanctuary cities after this beautiful woman was gunned down by an illegal who was deported five times, plus half a billion bucks to train and equip 60 people to fight ISIS. 60, I kid you not. See you at 1130. Unbelievable stories. Thank you very much, Eric. We will be watching. But up here first, a government official avoiding questions about her $26,000 car paid by taxpayers. And she's not the only one. Time to put the brakes on using taxes for this once and for all. I just no, want to no, ask if no, you're no, going to no, get back. No, no, I have one no, question. The response no, we got no, back is that.